What is an endophyte? Endophyte is any microbe, fun, fungus or bacterium that goes inside tissues of plants. And for example, in grasses. So these plants are sucking in these microbes out of the soil, but they're also putting them on seed so that they can then give it to the seedling and the seedling will have these microbes for the benefit of their growth. And as it turns out, when a, a seed germinates, the root comes out and then those bacteria on that seed or from the soil and from the soil will then colonize the shoot, the root tip. When are the plants communicating to the bacteria at that moment to tell them what, what they're malnourished on through that ethylene uh, communication transfer uh, connection? That's a really good question. How do plants and bacteria work together? Well, in this video, we're going to get into it. You're here with Mark Batwell on perfectgardens.com. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and make sure to check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and make sure to hit the notifications for future videos like this. Let's go ahead and get into it. Make sure to check out our monthly membership. For as little as $2.99 a month, you get access now to 105 members, 2,586 photos, 274 videos, 21 files, 1,106 shared links, and much, much more. Make sure to hit the join button on the bottom of every video. Okay, so basically what I'm going to talk about are how plants are internalizing, and I'll say soil microbes, because all of these microbes that they internalize come from the soil initially, and they adapt some of them so that they can utilize them better. They, they, they'll, they'll select for the ones they can use the best, and they'll put those onto the seeds of the plant so that the seeds, when the seeds germinate, they'll have these bacterial endophytes in them or fungal endophytes. Okay, so endophyte, what is an endophyte? Endophyte is any microbe, fun, fungus or bacterium that goes inside tissues of plants. And for example, in grasses, forest grasses or turf grasses like fescue grass or ryegrass, you have these fungal endophytes. You also have lots of bacterial endophytes in there, but you have these fungal endophytes that are well known and people may know the term endophyte because of these fungi that go in these grasses. And this is a fungus and you can see it here stained blue. That's the hypha of the fungus. And it goes between the cells. In this case, it's, it's what we call intercellular going between the cells, but it goes in the grass. You don't even know it's there. You've got to have a microscope to look at it. Okay, endo, meaning inside, phyte, meaning plant, endophyte, any fungus or bacterium that goes inside of. Inside so of that plant. blue is actually traveling through the cell, correct? It's actually, if you look in the background, look at this, you can see this little, these, where my arrow is going around like that. Those are the cells of the plant. So that blue, if you look at it, that blue is the hypha of the fungus that is on the surface of the cell. So these endophytes go into the tissues of the plant, but they stay between the cells in what we call the intercellular space, right? But we have other endophytes that actually will go inside the cells in the intracellular space. A lot of these bacteria do that. And that's what I'll that's what I'll be mostly talking about now are these endophytic bacteria. Basically these bacteria plants plants suck them into their tissues. They suck them in from the soil and they'll degrade some of them and some of them they'll then train to work as endophytes in the plant and they'll keep them in there. And you see them, for example, in roots. And I'll talk about this process, but you, but you can't see them. In fact, people have not seen them typically previous to say 2010 or so because they have to be stained. Otherwise you can't tell you can't see what they are and so we developed some stains to use them and to, to view them actually and you can see all these stains here and i'll be showing images of this dab in bt ammonium molybdate aniline blue basically these stains stain substances that are produced by the bacteria or produced by the plant in response to the bacteria so we can see them inside the and, and you need a microscope okay so so okay, you've only is, stained what you know is there, correct? Like you can only, only what you know is there, you can identify, put a stain to it and, and then identify. You can't just like put a, something out there randomly and see every different types of things, their possibilities they're creating. Is that correct? No, we can take any of these stains. Like for example, a lot of these endophytes are producing ethylene. So we could take that ethylene stain, one of the ethylene stains, we have multiple ones we could use. We can put them on the plant and anywhere these microbes are producing ethylene, we can see the 
microbes, right? So, I mean, we could use it to screen plants. And that's what we did really more recently. And we're looking at leaves, leaf, trichomes and trichome symbiosis, these bacteria that go into trichomes. And I'll talk about that. But uh, this is an example of one of these plants. This is from the desert island of Bonaire. I did some work there. It's nice to go to these places to do. Uh, this is one of the uh, islands in the Dutch Antilles, but it's a desert island. People like to go there for diving, but also they have these cacti all over this island. And if you look at the cactus fruits, you can see that just like the prickly pear that we have in, in North America, uh, but those fruits take the seeds out and seeds like that and germinate those and you get a seedling like this. And then you, if you look at the root hairs of this seedling, which is what I'm showing right here, you can show, the, show those little root hairs and you see the little dark structures inside those hairs. Those are the bacteria wow. that the plant took in. Like, so, so these plants are sucking in these microbes out of the soil, but they're also putting them on seed so that they can then give it to the seedling and the seedling will have these microbes for the benefit of their growth. And I'll talk about what that, how that works, but it's really, really interesting. So plants are consuming microbes or absorbing microbes from soils. This shows a root hair again. You can see these bacteria here and you can see the pairs of bacteria and uh, these roots just get filled with with microbes. That, that's just one example of a plant, but all plants, every vascular plant, all of the higher plants, we don't know how, how far back this system goes where plants are using microbes, but more than likely, even the ancestors of vascular plants were of plants, even non-vascular plants possibly, were taking in these microbes to get nutrients from them. It may be a, this may be, we don't know, but this may be a basic plant thing. And, uh, to crop plants like uh, here's one, cannabis, right? Cannabis. I have a student, April Michi, working, trying to work on cannabis, but it's really hard when it's illegal or when it's not fully legal yet, which is what we have here. Not fully legal yet. But if you look at the cannabis seeds, it's got, they actually see the seeds here. They have bacteria all over them and internal too. So they vector these microbes on the surface of seeds and also inside, and they will suck them out of the soil as well. And uh, this shows a root hair from cannabis. See all these little brown dots in there? Those are bacteria that the hemp took in. To the right, you see a bigger magnification. See the spherical structures? Those are the bacteria that cannabis took in into its structure. Tomato, you think tomato inside the tomato fruit has got to be clean, right? Mm, far from true. There are microbes being vectored in those seeds and around those seeds so that when those seeds germinate, they'll have bacteria uh, they go into the into the embryo, into the seedling. If you look, this is one of the bacteria we got from tomato. This is something called Micrococcus luteus. And we like it because it has these little packets of cells, these little tetrads, they're called. So they're very distinctive. So you can see them when they go inside the plant. And as it turns out, when a, a seed germinates, the root comes out. And then those bacteria on that seed or from the soil and from the soil will then colonize the shoot, the root tip. And this orange area is where the microbes are colonizing and going into the cells. And then and that orange actually is ethylene that's produced by those microbes. You can see also right there at the, at the very tip to the right, the, the purple color, that's where the bacteria are going in. Can I ask a quick question? Do specifically, what is ethylene? And specifically, what, what is it? It's a good question. Ethylene is a plant hormone. And ethylene will is used by plants to modulate or to control fruit ripening, for example, but also tissue growth. And uh, that, that uh, it's a hormone that will cause cells to elongate and, uh, and will also cause maturation, right, in fruits. And the bacteria so, produces it, correct? The bacteria are producing it. And, you know, I mean, this process, I would say, I, I would say it's a way that bacteria can control plants but in a very negative uh, or very low, a very limited way because bacteria produce ethylene and that causes nutrients to be released from the plant cell. So it's a way that bacteria can get sugar coming out of the plant. So it's kind of a communication, right? It's a communication tool. It's like the microbes saying, hey, give me sugar, you know, put ethylene out, give me sugar, give me sugar, give me photosynthate. And then it leaks out and then they can get some of that. 
In one of your previous videos, you're talking about how when the bacteria comes in, it's stripped and I don't want to get too far ahead. Uh, the bacteria gets stripped and the plants are producing um, sugars and I don't want to call ATP a sugar. I just, I, and sometimes I want to call it adenosine, the sugar, and then uh, phosphates, the minerals. But, and then I, I kind of heard someone say that the, the sugars are manipulated and changed and then attached to the bacteria and then recoded and sent back out through the root hairs. I don't know if I said that correctly, but my question to this is when are the plants communicating to the bacteria at that moment to tell them what, what they're malnourished on through that ethylene uh, communication transfer uh, connection? That's a really good question. The plants are, I'm going to put it a different way. Okay, please. The plants are cultivating the bacteria that they need in order to get the nutrients that they need. So the plants alter the microbes that they cultivate, right? And how they cultivate them. They, how do they do that? They do that by changing what nutrients they're putting out. Okay, for example, if the plants are looking for phosphorus and potassium and some other nutrients, that's, that's what they need, then they may have some nitrogen in addition to sugars in their exudates, in their root exudates. And that allows, because the nitrogen is out there, that allows these non back or the bacteria and the microbes that don't fix nitrogen, allows them to grow and then to acquire these other nutrients that the plant needs. And then they'll take that, take those microbes in, they'll absorb those microbes and get those nutrients from them, or they'll absorb those nutrients from the, the water, the solubilized component in the soil. Okay, so in other words, they are giving the nutrients that enable them to get these other nutrients, right? If, for example, they are short of nitrogen, they will continue to put sugars in their exudates, but they will withhold any amino acids. And that has nitrogen and amino acids. And so, that forces the microbes to fix nitrogen. And then they will take those fix those microbes that are fixing nitrogen and take those into their tissues. That sounds like an osmotic effect. You know, if they're, if they're, I mean, does that sound correct? Like if they're taking a, if they're not allowing the amino acids to have amino acids are nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, sulfur, and a lot, I'm missing one of them. I'm correct. But if they're restricting it, then does, is that creating like an osmo, osmotic effect? So when they're traveling around, it's sucking in to find balance. It's not really an osmotic effect. What they're doing is they're managing the population of bacteria in the soil. And they are, by withholding amino acids from the exudates, they're forcing those bacteria to fix nitrogen. And they're selecting those nitrogen fixers in the environment, right? And then they can then get the nitrogen from those nitrogen fixers. So they're, all, what they're doing is somebody, actually Jeff Lowenfeld said it nicely, Plants are ranching microbes and they are, hmm. you know, they're cultivating the microbes that they need, growing the microbes they need, and then they're taking them in and taking nutrients from them. And so they are cultivating the microbes they need depending on what nutrients they need. But it's a little different than mechanism that you suggested. It's a, a little bit more po microbe population management approach rather than a, like an osmotic uh, nutrient absorption I appreciate that approach. Yeah, no, you're you're welcome. I mean, it requires a little bit different thinking about it, right? Can, you think can I, about it a little differently. Yeah, Dave. Going back to the ethylene that the bacteria is is producing, um, is is it the similar process with with auxins, where where like certain products like um, kelp meal or kelp products, seaweed products have shown to have auxins, root enhancements, and these hormones. Is that the similar, is there a similar process? Are they make, is it ultimately that then they end up making ethylene from that? Or is that a totally different process with, with auxins? So it's a different process, but some of these microbes can also make auxin. And it's been hypothesized for a long time that these microbes that can make auxin oxen are stimulating uh, plant growth and development. Okay, we don't see that in the studies that we do. We're not even, we're not standing for oxen. So we're, we're instead, you know, looking at these uh, bacterial plant cell interactions, and we have not yet developed a way that we can visualize oxen in that exchange. So there could be oxen produced by some of these microbes. We just don't know. I mean, this is, we're putting together the puzzle 
uh, based on you know the studies that we're doing. We have we have not you know gone into the literature and just fished out and said, well, this this must be here. Well, we don't assume that. We, we instead we we led our work led to ethylene as the key component here. Anyways, those are good questions. Uh, you can see, look here, this is, this is a, a root, see root cells here, and you can see those little tetrads inside those cells. So this is just so you can get a close look at, at the bacteria inside the cells. And this is in the area that these bacteria are going in. 